Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be testing the Sin R1 in multiplayer at a rank of 1682. Tuning is shown on screen. We are jumping right into the first race, which I believe is one of the most epic comebacks of all time, at least for me. So the Sin R1 can reach 306 miles per hour at this rank of 1682, which is quite good for its rank, about 6 miles per hour slower than the Apollo, which can be negated by skill in a lot of cases. Its acceleration is only average, however its nitro efficiency is extremely good, as are its handling and drifting. Now here it randomly jumped into the air, allowing the Apollo to catch up to me and knock me down. And that caused the Apollo to get quite far ahead of me. However, this is a two lap race. Do you think the Sin can catch up to the Apollo or not? That is what we will be finding out in this race. So, in my opinion, the Sin R1 is one of the easiest cars in the entire game to drive, and one of the most fun. It is so smooth, and aside from randomly jumping into the air occasionally, it is extremely stable, as in, like, it never skids. I don't believe I've ever seen this car skid once. However, its looks leave something to be desired. Eris calls it the bug, and I fully agree with him. It looks like a bug on the front and a barfing six-eyed alien on the back. Yeah, not that nice looking of a car. However, its performance makes up for that. As you can see, we have now caught up quite close to this Apollo. Even though the Apollo is a faster car than the Sin R1, I have learned many airspeed tricks plus quicker routes than it seems that he has, and thus I have been able to catch up to him. So many people have actually requested me test the Sin R1 after the rise of the Apollo, and so I wanted to make this video for you to show that if you have have good skill, the Sin R1 is not a dead car by any means. Everyone thinks it is, and while yes, it is inferior to the Apollo, it can still beat them. I have now overtaken the Apollo around this turn, and because of this car's extremely nice drifting, we pull ahead of the Apollo Intenza Emotion for the win. That should give you some hope for the Sin R1. So this Apollo that we beat was ever so slightly lower at a rank of 1672, but he's still several miles per hour faster than me at that rank. Now this race on London is one of the longest and closest races that I have ever played in. It is against two other Sin R1s, mainly this Abomination J guy, who was a very good driver, and two Apollo IEs, one of which is driven by my friend IND Psycheron, who is behind me right now, but whom we will see later in the race. He is driving a 1695 Apollo IE. Thankfully, that time the barrel worked. On the second lap, well, let's just say it doesn't work quite so well. So the two Sin R1s in this race are at a rank of 1682 exactly like me. So they have the exact same tune and are going the exact same speed. So yes, that is why this is so extremely close. The Apollo ahead of me right now is at a rank of 1694, and I am not sure what that tune is, but IND Psycheron's 1695 tune is 35055055, and probably one of the tunes that I fear most in my 1684 Apollo. Even though I do usually manage to beat them most of the time on longer tracks because of their slightly higher speed and not much worse acceleration, they can catch up. But you have to remember that tune is 11 rank higher than my 1684 tune, and while that may not seem like a lot, it is definitely significant when dealing with matchmaking. So at this point, the 1694 Apollo is ahead, and Psycheron in his 1695 Apollo is directly behind me. However, the barrel does not work so well on the second lap, and thus Psycheron flies ahead. However, it worked extremely badly for the other Apollo that was in first place, the 1694 one. If you go back, replay the clip, you can see he flew high into the air and floated down like a balloon. He is now all the way back into fourth position, and the car directly behind me right now is Abomination J in his 1682 Sin R1. Yes, this race was extremely intense all the way throughout it, and one of the reasons I am glad I am having a YouTube channel is that I can share these really crazy races with you guys that nobody would otherwise be able to see. So we are now coming up to the finish line behind Psycheron, but ahead of two Sin R1s as well as the 1694 Apollo. So clearly the Sin R1 is not a car to be taken lightly. In this race, not one, but two Sin R1s beat that 1694 Apollo IE. 
And speaking of the Apollo IE, I have made a Lego model of it. Yes, a Lego model of the Apollo Intensa Emotion. I have posted pictures of it in my Purple Team community, and I would greatly recommend checking it out because it is definitely my favorite Lego model of a car in Asphalt 8 that I have created. And this is a bit of a crazy start to a race there. Now I would like to speak a little bit about the new McLaren X2. So it has been found out that 10.0.10.0, because it has 10 levels of pro kits and no max upgrades, gives a rank of 1672 with a speed around 306 miles per hour. That means the X2 goes approximately the same speed as this car goes at almost the exact same rank, however with better acceleration. So technically speaking, the X2 should basically just be a Sonar 1 at this rank, but accelerate faster and maybe have slightly worse nitro efficiency. Just to give you a little idea of how it will be, and I hopefully will be winning the car at that rank, number one, if I can get enough custom racing engines for it which I should be able to and number two if you can actually win the championship with that rank and you've been able to win all previous ones with that rank so I think I should be able to win this one with that rank as well and as you can see in this video 306 miles per hour is not shabby at all for this rank I've beaten quite a few Apollos in this car even though they are slightly faster than me by just driving better so in this race we lost to an Apollo but we did beat two so let's see what their ranks were the one that beat us was at a rank of 1671, the other two were 1634 and 1667. So for those of you who were considering not going for the McLaren X2 because you cannot pro it out because it requires 64 custom racing engines, definitely still go for it because at this rank, it's basically going to be the second best car for multiplayer behind the Apollo IE because people have figured out that it does not really skid either, which is a very good thing because most other F1 cars around this rank do skid get a bit. I will be trying to go for every single car that is released in this update, except for the possibility that the Subaru GT1 requires a very high rank to win, in which case I'm probably not going to go for it and just farm V8's Office Championship because it's a bad car and I need more V8s for the Zenvo TS1. But most likely I will be able to win the Sparrow GT1 without spending many, if any, V8 engines on it because the Venser and the Apollo N were able to be won with just 0505 no pro kits needed, and I just farmed engines from those events. So I'm hoping the Sparrow GT1 will be the same way, and I should be testing it in multiplayer. It's not that great because of its high starting rank, but its upgrade rank percentages are decently good, and so it's better than cars like the Twin Mill, for example, which is pretty bad. So one Apollo back there wrecked. We are just now coming into the final stretch of the first lap. So let's see if we can hold off this Apollo for an entire another lap on Tokyo Reverse. Do you think we can do it? Judging by previous races in this video, I'm sure you know the answer. So now I'd like to speak a bit about some of the other cars in the update. The Rimac, I have started the R&D just a couple days ago because I needed a farm for it beforehand. I'm planning to try to win it at a tune of 0505, 5055, rank 1684, at which it can reach 300 miles per hour which isn't especially great for that rank, but is not terrible either, and it's better than a lot of people expected. So that car, while it does have a very low stock to max per rank increase, does have low weightings on top speed and nitro, and it also has quite good acceleration. So we are coming up to the very end of the second lap here, in the long straight section where cars with faster speed do catch up. Here he pushes me over, but I managed to drift out of it and zoom ahead to come into second place. Just ahead of that Apollo and not too far behind the one that is in first place. Place, which had a rank of 1658 and we beat one with a rank of 1735 plus an M2 Special Edition, which is not very good around this rank. So now for an interesting race on Alps against two Apollo IEs, as well as an MP425, which by the way, I made a video about recently, and in that video I showed that it still does quite well on short tracks against Apollo IEs. On longer tracks, not so much, but if you can get one lap on a track like Dubai or Crystal Lake or anything twisty and short such as that, you should be able to pull out a victory a lot of the time. And speaking of the MP425, the Rizvani Beast Alpha has now killed the MP425 on all tracks that the MP425 was king on, because the Rizvani speeds up almost as fast as the MP425, and its speed is like three or four miles per hour faster. 
And when multiplayer tuned, the Rizvani can reach a speed approximately 5 miles per hour faster than the MP425 at a rank of 1679. With a tune of 4504-5055 on the Rizvani, it can reach a speed of over 302 miles per hour with nearly identical acceleration. So that car should be quite interesting, and I also think it will be able to beat the Apollo on a lot of short and twisty tracks. Because I believe it also has quite good drifting. So right now in this race, a 1695 Apollo IE is ahead of me, one of the better tunes for the IE, and the one directly behind me is a 1700 Apollo IE, followed by the 1683 MP425 quite a bit back there. So here, again, I have a situation where the Apollo tries to push me, but then I drift out of it, and somehow I got slowed down, but he also got slowed down, and he didn't manage to catch up, so I managed to come in second. Again, Wow, the ending of that race and the previous race seem eerily similar, and here I beat him by just one frame. In this next race, on Barcelona, we are facing an Audi R8 SE as well as two Apollo IEs, one of which is slightly lower, but the other one is at 1735 rank. So let's see how we do against all these three cars. So one of them wrecks at the beginning. I believe it is the R8 SE. So the 1660 whatever Apollo is the one directly behind us and the 1735 one is the one ahead. Now you'll notice he is not actually pulling away all that fast. And that is one really interesting thing I noticed about playing around this rank. The faster the cars around a rank are going, the less speed difference matters. If you think about it, this makes sense. When cars are faster, they get around the track faster, meaning that cars that have higher speed by the same amount will have less time to catch up. Likewise, cars with faster speed also have less time to get ahead. But if you play way down in like the 1200, 1300, 1400 range, the speed differences are a lot more significant, even when they are technically the same speed differences. I hope that made some sense. So here we lost to the 1735 Apollo IE, but beat a 1663 Apollo IE, as well as a 1668 R8 SE, which really is not that great around this rank. I've heard some people say that a couple people have actually managed to get to Champion League in their Max Pro 1679 R8 SE, but I can imagine that would be extremely difficult. However, because that is possible, it is definitely also possible to get the Champion in the Resvani Beast Alpha. Because at the same rank as the R8 SE, number one, it accelerates faster, and number two, it goes at a faster speed. So yes, if you need a good car to get the champion and you don't have any of the current OP ones, the Rizvani Beast Alpha will be a good car for you to go for. So here, because the Apollo IE speeds up faster, he's able to catch up to me and knock me down, thus putting me back into third position. However, as you will see, not all hope is lost. Sector 8 is just one of those tracks where stuff just tends to happen, and people are a lot more likely to wreck on a track such as this one, rather than something like, say, Barcelona. And I actually managed to pass him around this turn, and thus pop slightly ahead of him, but then, of course, he gets ahead of me again after the turn because of his better acceleration. Some people think that acceleration is only important at the beginning of a race, so as to get ahead of everybody and to not get knocked down. And while that is true, it also helps around turns, because you can accelerate quicker up to your top speed after you exit a turn, especially one like the Sector 8 turn, which zaps a lot of speed and you really want to get up to your top speed quickly after it. This is just another reason why acceleration upgrades are so very important around this rank. If you have a car that already goes a very fast speed for its rank. So you may be wondering, well, if that's the case, why didn't you upgrade acceleration any on the Sin R1? Well, the answer to this is the Sin R1 has actually quite a high rank weighting on acceleration. So upgrading that instead of speed wouldn't actually do much for me, and it would greatly increase the rank, and thus my speed would be a lot lower, like many miles per hour slower. So I figured it was not worth it in this case. However, on something like the Apollo IE, you only sacrifice a couple miles per hour, and you can knock down other Apollo IEs at the beginning and not get knocked down yourself. Here we beat another 1682 Sin R1, as well as a 1706 Apollo IE. A 1685 Apollo IE beat us. So this race is, um, interesting, we'll say. So it's kind of an example of why you should not get greedy in multiplayer. You will see what I mean near the end of the race. So usually what happened in most of my Sin R1 races is the Apollo IEs would shoot ahead at the beginning and I'd just wait for them to make some kind of little mistake or just go around turns wide like these Apollos right here have been doing. 
and then they accelerate faster around the turns and thus still get slightly ahead. And then I thought, okay, well, maybe I can overtake them around these turns. And I actually did manage to take these S turns quite well. I had this little run-in with that Apollo there, and because of both of their better acceleration, again, that acceleration is coming into play. Well, one of them actually only managed to get ahead. The other one had a problem around the final turn. So now I was up to second place. Okay, in this case, I was thinking, all right, if he runs out of nitro or makes some other kind of mistake, maybe a wide curve, I can catch up to him and maybe pull out first place. And what do you know? He goes wide, drifts a lot, and I am just barely behind him. Actually, I'm now just beside him. So I shove him to the side and then proceed to wreck myself. And because he accelerates faster, again, acceleration coming into play, he manages to get ahead, and I come into third position. If I had just passed him, not tried to knock him down, at least not so aggressively, I would have come in at least second position, maybe still first position. So guys, learn from my mistakes, and don't do very risky things to increase your position such as I did. Because it backfired on me, and pretty hard too. So our final race is on San Diego Harbor Reverse against two Apollo Intenza Emozions, as well as an R8SE. This is one of the most crazy races in the video, mainly because of a very weird occurrence in the end that makes this one of the, let's say, luckiest comebacks that I've ever seen. So guys, this video is quite a longer one, just like the SLK one that I made previously, 16 to 17 minutes. I usually do less than 15 minutes, so guys, let me know, do you like these longer videos, or would you rather me keep them a little bit shorter? I personally think that these longer ones do allow for a more thorough representation of the car's ability because of more races, but I don't want it to get so long that it becomes boring or tedious. So let me know, guys. So there, both of them wrecked. I think one of them wrecked on the boxes and one of them wrecked on his carcass. I've ever used that joke, I know. Allowing me to swoop into first position for the win. So yes, this car is still worth it if you are saving up blueprints for it. Use this tune, always risk points, and if you drive well, you should be able to pull out some wins against the Apollos. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed and consider subscribing to see my asphalt content right as it comes out. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.